viewers were just out for a wander and we found some elderberries. Oh, how exciting. So, um, there's not many left on this bush. Please always be very, very careful if you pick anything wild. I, I've, I've picked elderberries all my life, so I know what they are. Um, they look like this, basically. Um, so let's make an apple, elderberry and blackberry pie. Okay, so let's pick a few blackberries to go with the elderberries. chucking it down but I need some apples to go with those luscious blackberries and elderberries so here we go I believe the change in the weather I got a bit of a soaking there um, so yeah but I've got quite a few apples these apples it's a very weird autumn because they're not really ready yet um, but yet they're dropping off the tree so um, they're probably going to need a little bit more sugar than they would need later on. I normally pick these around about the second week of October to be honest so they're, they're very very early um, and then they need hardly any sugar. That variety is called Newton's Wonder and they go to be like huge footballs by the middle of October if they're still on the tree if we haven't eaten them all. So, but they're, they're a fabulous apple to cook with. Um, if you haven't got a Newton's Wonder, just use a Bramley for this. They're very, very similar to a Bramley, how they cook. Um, they, get, they do that luscious puffing up thing, so they're, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we've got um, elderberries. Not, not many elderberries, you don't need many. There were only a few left on that bush, so I suspect someone had been there before me. I did leave a few for the animals as well. Um, but I actually have to say, I've got the feeling that um, I'd really like to make some elderberry wine next week, and I know where there's another tree, so fingers crossed that no one's beaten me to them. Um, and obviously, we always leave a good few for the wildlife. Um, but yeah, look at these viewers. Now, please, Please don't pick anything that you don't know what it is. Um, I used to go as a little girl to make elderberry wine with my grandpa. And I can remember picking these as a child. Never eat them raw. They are gross. They, they, I don't make anything with them on their own because they just, they taste powdery, absolutely horrible. I was always told when I was little, I don't know if it's true, that the whole plant is poisonous except for the juicy bit. So even the seed is apparently poisonous. Um, the best way, but obviously, you know, everybody uses them to make wine and um, sauces and things. The best thing to do to get the berries off is to get a fork and to strip them. Um, so you kind of, I, I'm just not going to do it now because I'll, I'll do that off camera. But you just strip them. Um, and I, I won't use these ones, for example, that aren't quite ripe on there. Um, but you don't need many because they overpower. Now the blackberries... Get out into your hedgerows and get some blackberries. And they're so good for you, so delicious. Um, obviously, be very, very careful what you pick. Make sure you know what a blackberry looks and feels like. Um, because I would hate anyone to eat the wrong berry. But they, you can make jam. Um, I've had these soaking for about two hours, which I always do, and I've changed the water once. That's because so many wiggly things come up. Um, and you know, you don't want to be cooking with those, but that they, th those are now, they're ready to go in the colander and be rinsed. So what I'm actually going to do as well, I'm feeling a little bit like a three berry pie. I'm changing my mind. Now I froze the black currants. This was around about Wimbledon week, I think, when our black currants were ready outside. Um, so those are just some that I took off the bush around about, when, when is Wimbledon? It's the last week of June, isn't it? So they were ready. Now, because I've frozen these already, I'm not going to refreeze this pie when it's finished. You don't need many black currants because they overpower. I would say that's probably plenty. Okay, so I'm going to give the apples a good peel now. I'll do that off camera so that you won't be completely bored to death. And then we'll um, see what we're going to do from there. Actually, before I get peeling, I forgot to say... I mean, I'm rubbish at making pastry, absolutely rubbish. It takes me a long time and then it's never as good as the bought stuff. Never leave these when you see them reduced. If you've got a freezer, that's all you need. Stick it in. They last for, I don't know, a year maybe that I would still use one after, but they never hang around that long. Such a good product. So sensible to freeze it. Now this one was 79 pence, so that's not the greatest reduction I've ever had on them. I think I had one for 15p once. But, you know, if you're a student, it's absolutely ideal. Um, really cheap, fantastic thing to use with a pie, with a quiche. Um, well, you can't go wrong with frozen pastry. I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's all the berries washed and prepared. Now, it's quite difficult for me to give exact quantities for this because I'm going to actually make slightly more than you would need um, for a pie because what's going to come out is going to be also really lovely to put with pancakes um, and also a little special um, 
liqueur that um, I can tell you about in a moment. Anyway, so I've ended up with that many blackberries. Now, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted, Barry. Um, he didn't do this one in Bournemouth. What a shame that was, but um, I, I, it's just Bournemouth again now, isn't it? Now Barry's gone. Oh dear, I do hope he comes back soon. Um, what a night that was. And thank you so much for the lovely comments. I'm so glad so many people have been enjoying it. So yeah, I thought we'd have a bit of Barry today to brighten up this. Well, Bermuda would be nice, wouldn't it? Because you wouldn't know, it's um, 2nd of September today. Oh dear, it feels like about 2nd of November would be more like it. But anyway, so we've got about, I think that'd be about three ounce of blackberries there. Uh, just probably an ounce of black currants. And the elderberries, I mean, they are, to be honest, completely optional. You may not be able to find them, um, but it's just such a, Oh, I don't know. It, it, it's full of antioxidants, elderberry juice. It's a very um, good for you thing, obviously, if you don't eat the poison bits. Um, okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of, probably about an ounce of sugar to this. And I'm going to take a shortcut and microwave it. Um, that is ample sugar. It's just to make, because what I'm after with this, I'm not after the whole fruit, so I want the liqueur that comes off. Now, you could gently cook this on the stove. I would probably use, I've got this lovely enamel pan here, something like that would be ideal to just gently cook those with a wooden spoon, but I'm going to take a shortcut and microwave them. Um, I'm gonna microwave them on 850 for two minutes, then I'm gonna stir, and then I'm gonna do them for about another minute and a half, but your microwave might vary. Okay, I think that's done. So let's get them out of the microwave. Oh, look at this. Now, what I'm after is the juice. Um, oh, absolutely lovely. I gave them a little bit of a mash halfway through. Um, this is a lovely thing. My mummy bought me this, oh, years and years and years ago. Um, it's an old prestige one, but it's a super little masher. Okay, I don't want to waste a drop of this gorgeous liqueur. Right, so let's see if we pour into this. Oh wow, look at this. Of course I'm wearing white trousers, that was sensible, wasn't it? Oh dear, will I ever learn beers? I don't think so. Okay. Now, obviously as I say, you don't need to use the elderberries. And um, actually, if I hadn't used the black currants, which were already frozen, I could have frozen what comes off. Um, and I'll show you why in a second, that that might be a rather nice thing to do. Because this liqueur that's coming off now, oh wow, the smell. Catherine, what does that smell like? Amazing. It just smells like gorgeous autumn days, doesn't it? Yeah. I imagine it's what when Peter Rabbit went down the lane to, oh no, it's Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail that went to gather blackberries, wasn't it? And Peter Rabbit was naughty and he went into Mr. McGregor's field. I imagine that's the sort of thing that Peter Rabbit's mummy would have made. It smells so lovely. Now, Here's what I'm going to say, that it's a little bit naughty, but you don't want to waste a drop of that gorgeous liqueur because it actually makes a fantastic mixer. I would say when that's, well, you can have it hot for a hot toddy. Um, if you've got a cold coming, or if I personally have got a cold coming, um, unfortunately I haven't had a cold for a while, viewers. I think I could do with a cold now. It might be rather nice. Um, so a shot of gin with probably 50 mils of that, or maybe 25 to 50 mils depending on taste, and then top it up with lemonade. And I guarantee you that just makes an absolutely phenomenal drink. And the thing about it is, as I say, if I hadn't put the black currants in, which were already frozen, if I just used the blackberry juice, for example, you can freeze that now. So, you know, on a winter day when you need a little bit of a pick-me-up, you've got, freeze that in a little bottle, and you've got a fantastic juice. It's a bit like a, a just um, a, a really country side version of Ribena. Absolutely perfect mixer. I think that's about all we're going to get out of that now. So I better get on with peeling the apples. It smells so good. Yeah, it's just delicious, isn't it? Okay, so we've had the usual few worms. Um, this is what I'm left with. It's quite difficult to say how many that was. I'd say it's about six large ones. 
six, six or seven large ones. Um, for the actual pie, you're probably only going to need four about that size, I would say. Um, but I'm obviously I'm making a double quantity here. Um, I've just tasted the blackberry, blackcurrant and elderberry liqueur and it's absolutely delicious. Now, I'm my own worst critic and I think I, if I was making that again, I would add slightly more blackberries, slightly less elderberries. So, you know, you just need to tweak around with the little um, niceties of it, but absolutely delicious. Right, so these apples, it's, it is quite early for this tree. Some of them are looking a little green. So I'm going to add more sugar than I would, in the middle of October, I won't have to add any because they are just almost an eating apple by then. But so, that's gonna be about an ounce, and a half, maybe two ounces. Um, and I'm gonna microwave these. Now, I'm not adding any water, they don't need it. Sometimes apples do, these don't. Because we're obviously going to be adding the elderberry liqueur in a minute anyway. Um, so I'm going to microwave these today, but you could easily cook that on the jet. It's lovely to cook um, with a wooden spoon, just you know, see them dissolve before your eyes. But I'm going to give that three minutes, stir, two and a half minutes, stir, two minutes, stir, and then we'll, we'll show you what we get. Okay, I think it's done. Um, probably had about eight minutes, I think. Oh, look. Look at that. Oh, absolutely delicious. Now, as it stands like this, it's absolutely, well, let's mash it up a bit more. Absolutely gorgeous with pancakes. Look at that. Oh, this was so superb um, in Bournemouth, Barry. This was, I think this was the best one of the night. It had the biggest cheer. Absolute standing ovation, all the glow sticks going there. We got. I'm just gonna start fogging up the. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, okay. it's lovely. Right. All right. So look, that with pancakes um, and cream. Oh, absolutely delicious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of the liqueur to it. I'm gonna save a little bit back. Um, for medicinal purposes, viewers. Obviously, you understand, medicinal purposes only. Let's see how we get on. Oh, smells like autumn. Do what we got, don't let go, girl. We got a lot, got a lot of love between us. I think just a little more. So pink. And as I say, medicinal purposes only, but the liqueur that that makes is going to be absolutely delicious. I think I'll put that on there. Yeah. yeah. So again, with this, you can use this um, with pancakes. You could put this in a crumble. I'm going to put it in a pie. Whatever, I'm hoping there's going to be some left over because we'll have that with pancakes tomorrow, I think. And I've got the little bit left over to have as a, what will we say, happy hour on a Friday, a little bit of gin fizz though with that. It's going to be very, very nice indeed, I think. Okay, so I'm going to blind bake the pastry case now. Not something I'm particularly good at. I'm expecting it to look a complete mess, to be honest, but it doesn't matter. Once the pie fillings in, it'll be fine. So I'll get on with that and um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I am absolutely terrible with pastry, but I'm going to blind bake. Um, now, what I'm gonna do, I haven't actually got any greaseproof paper, I've run out, but I'm gonna try and use the one that came with the pastry case. So, I want it slightly bigger than the case. Lola, whoops, she was a showgirl with the yellow feathers in her hair and a dress goes down there, she was merengue. Right, let's see if that will fit in. I want to leave it overlapping. Okay, let's have a look. From eight till four, they were young and they had each other. Who could ask for more at the Copa? Right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trim the pastry so that it's still hanging over the edge. So I'm actually gonna need a bit more to put on the top. Music and passion were always the fashion at the Copa. They fell in love. Copa, 
Havana. I do love this song. I always do it karaoke and embarrass myself, don't I? Right, so let's see if we can get away with this. This is what I need the greaseproof paper for. Keep all of them in there. That'll do. Yes. I've lost my baking beads. I had a wonderful set of baking beads and I can't find them anywhere. I actually lost them when we moved house, which was nearly seven years ago, so that's life, isn't it, sometimes? But So really, you should use rice, but this is almost as good. It's got some rice in it. So that'll weight that down while I just blind bake that for about, I'd say, 12 minutes. Now, on my oven, I'm going to put it on number 200, but you might need to go hotter. It depends on your oven push that in so it doesn't all bubble up. Okay, so let's go in with that. And I've left pastry hanging over the sides just so that I can trim it better when it comes out. So probably about 12 minutes, but I'll know when it's done. So you know your oven. Um, mine is hot on 200. It kind of works at 220 on 200. So here we go. baking hasn't gone too badly for once. I've put the beans back in the little jar. I should just say by the way viewers, if you notice my wedding ring on the side, just I never wear my wedding ring when I'm doing pastry because I think it's quite horrid. Sometimes bits can get stuck underneath and it could be a bit of a germ fest. So I hadn't had an argument with Lawrence or anything. It's just my pastry mode. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Now, years and years ago, I heard a little tip. You don't have to do this. This is entirely optional. But, and you came and you gave without taking. Sorry, viewers. A little bit of semolina. This is entirely optional. Um, just a little bit on the bottom, just a little bit like this, of an apple pie before you put it in keeps the pastry crisp. Apparently, I mean, I do it because I was told to do it and it seems to work. Whether or not it, you know, whether it would be as crisp without it, I don't know, but I do it. Anyway, so it's just a little tip if you want to try it, but please don't feel obliged to. Right, so let's put some of this lovely stuff in it. I had a little taste of this um, while the pie was blind baking and it is phenomenal. Now, I don't want to overload the pie because it will, um, it will rise up during cooking um, because these apples are really, really fluffy, so they will fluff up. Um, so I don't want to unload it, but equally I want it to be, you know, I want you to, to know you've got a good bit of apple and berries there. So possibly a little bit more. And then look at that, we've got that left tomorrow, Catherine, for pancakes. Oh, fantastic. So we'll, yeah, we'll have that with pancakes and cream for a lovely Saturday morning this breakfast. This is like one of my favourite parts whenever you make um, a pie or a cake oh, or something like that. Oh, we get it left over, yeah. The leftovers yeah. always go on pancakes and things like yes, that, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's absolutely perfect amount. Okay, so we've got that for tomorrow, which is great. Now I'm going to grab my pastry brush, and I've just beaten one medium egg here. Um, I, I didn't have any small eggs, but obviously I didn't need, I don't need the whole eggs up, but I won't throw it away. Um, if we don't use, I'll put in the fridge with a bit of cling film on and that will go for an omelette tomorrow morning for somebody. Or maybe a little bit of uh, lemon curd or something. So I'm just going to brush this to make a glue. This was fantastic when Barry did this in Bournemouth. I'm sorry to keep going on about it viewers, but it was just one of the most amazing gigs I've ever been to. Um, and he, I don't know if you could see from the footage that I put, he had himself when he was um, in 1975, when his first TV appearance uh, playing this, and he, had, he was actually duetting with himself, it was just tremendous. I don't know whether anybody else has got that on YouTube if you um, want to have a look at it, but it was just fantastic, because I've only put a little bit on obviously. Um, okay, here we are, that should do. Can smile. Oh, I do love this song as well. Okay, so this seemed to roll out quite nicely. I mean, never be afraid to roll these pastries um, thinner than they say they're meant to be because they do go much thinner than advertised. There we are. So we just put that on nicely there. Yes, that just about fits. That's lovely. Right, and then I should get my trusty knife. Oh, that's still a little bit warm. Little tea towel there. Okay. Just can't smile. 
Okay, and I'm going to trim round carefully. But you see, if you leave a little bit of an edge when you blind bake, this is going to be fun cleaning this up in a minute. If you leave a bit of an edge, then you get a much better seal. And I mean, not, not anything I do ever looks professional, but it looks a little bit more professional than if it had shrunk back during the blind baking. So there we are. Okay, so just give me that second. And I've got my lovely old blackbird there, so I'm going to pop him in the middle. Make a little incision here. Hello, Mr. Blackbird. I'll do a cross. I think that's the easiest shape. There we are, and then what I can do is take the four corners and lift them up. And I do think if you've got a pie funnel, put one in because it does release the steam and stop your pastry going soggy. These things really do work. They're not just if you pretty. haven't got a pie funnel, um, put a little. I mean, I might put a B for Barry today. Just cut something <laughs> into the pastry. Oh, or a K for Catherine, darling. Do you remember when I used to always do a K for Catherine when you were little? Yeah. And then I had to do a J for James when he was born. And um, then we found this. Yes, And there was yes, a lot less yes, arguing. Yes, yes, that's right. So, and then I think egg works best as a garnish um, to just brown it up in the oven. So let's push that right to the edges. Oh, look, I've got a little bit short there. That will spring back in cooking, but it doesn't matter. It's not got to be perfect. It's just got to be delicious, hasn't it? That's the thing. Yes, but you could, if you haven't got an egg, you could put, or if someone in your family's allergic to egg, um, you could put milk. It, it works equally well with milk. Um, don't use the skim, though. Use full fat, really, or at least semi-skim, because otherwise it won't catch. It'll just not not quite it won't go golden but this egg should go really really golden now i'm going to bake this on a high heat um i'm going with 200 on this oven which is you know it's probably the equivalent of 210 220 and i'm going to bake it it'll probably be in for 25 minutes but i'm going to start checking it from 15 because sometimes this oven does go hot and it's been on a lot today so there we are. Okay, so there's a little bit of well, about half the egg left there, so I certainly won't be throwing that away. We'll be having that tomorrow with something. And in goes the pie. Well, good luck, Mr. Blackbird. Let's hope you make a lovely pie. And he's very old, that blackbird. He's lost a bit of his beak, but he's still good. He still works, still fit for purpose. In he goes. Right, there we are. So hopefully see you in 25 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes. Um, I don't have a light on my oven anymore, viewers, because I don't know what happened. I think it's a loose connection, but when we get a power cut sometimes, when the electric box goes around here, then it comes back on for about 40 minutes, but then, then it doesn't, it goes off, so I don't know. And anyway, it would be useful to know what's going on in here from time to time, but still, I think it's done. Oh, yes. Oh, now it has shrunk back a bit. Oh, it's lovely, though. Oh. What do you think? Oh, that looks absolutely scrumptious, doesn't it? Catherine, what does that smell like? It smells absolutely oh, gorgeous. Oh, oh, it's just autumn days, isn't it? I think I need to let it cool down before I try a piece. Oh, because I'm going to burn my mouth, aren't I? But I'm desperate to try some. Um, so yeah, so what I'll say about this one is then, it's about four apples about that size, probably for a pie like that. As many blackberries as you feel you need, you don't have to put the elderberries um, or the blackcurrants. In fact, just blackcurrants would work, just blackberries would work, but not just elderberries, definitely not. They're, they're, they're like, oh no, it's just, that's something that needs other berries to take the taste. Please, please, please don't pick anything in the hedgerows if you don't know what it is, because you could have right, a really bad tummy or even die. So if you're not sure, just leave it, get some supermarket blackberries, absolutely fine, and that, that, that would make you know, the same sort of pie. In fact, the supermarket ones are better in some ways because they use the plumper varieties. Um, we haven't had much rain in Dorset this summer. Well, we wouldn't know because we've been in the monsoons of Scotland, but um, we haven't had much um, rain. So they're very small ones this year. But they have got that lovely taste. Yes, they do. Yeah, but that's why it's, we've got all the juice out. We've got as much juice as we could there, haven't we? Yeah. So, yeah, so really, this is going to be absolutely delicious. Um, cannot wait, I have to say. Okay, so it's Friday night, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. 
And I'll tell you what, it's Friday night, why don't you give someone you love a hug right now? I'm going to, come here Catherine! <laughs> Aww. Aww. Have a lovely weekend, Beatrice. Have a lovely Bye. weekend! Actually, I can't wait, and this is really naughty because I haven't had my tea yet. But, um, so the first piece out always collapses, doesn't it? It's really difficult to get out, but that's not too bad. So, um, but the pastry was quite nice. I would say serve this hot with cream, but also custard would work beautifully with it. Um, I particularly like those ones with vanilla in, those Madagascan vanilla ones. Marks's do one, um, and Sainsbury's do one. I think Marks's one's really, really nice, actually. Do you remember yeah. that time I ate a whole one? Like I do, because they're absolutely really delicious, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy to do that. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Unbelievable. Oh, it's unbelievable. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. Oh, fantastic. I, you'll, you'll love this. You'll absolutely love this. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Be kind to each other. And I'll see you again really soon. One, two, three.